Whether you're brand new to politics, and yes, politics, not politics, or you've been politically engaged your whole life, sometimes there are words and phrases that will go right over your head unless you work in the swamp itself. The swamp, by the way, is a nickname for Washington, D.C. See? We're already learning. In this episode, I put together a list of terms that I think everyone should be familiar with in order to better understand politics, or at least be able to pretend that you know what you're talking about. That's because I graduated the sixth grade, man. Only took three years. This is the ABCs of politics, or just the conservapedia. Either way, I'm Alex Clark, and this is Politics. We'll start off easy here with one that has been asked about in the comments. 2A. 2A is the shorthand version of Second Amendment. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It's the cool way for Americans to say they got freedom. Like, back away, I got my 2A. A lot of you may know this term already, but don't forget that there are new people who still need to learn these basics. Write that down, write that down! <laughs> Authoritarian conservative. This type of conservative is typically big mad about cultural issues. In fact, that is their number one gripe and basically all they care about. Think the Karen of conservatism. Don't you tell me what to do. I'll tell you what to do. This political ideology wants an authoritarian state to preserve and enforce whatever traditional values it's in favor of. They think traditional conservatism involves too many libertarians and they want authority even though they don't consider themselves fascist. But honestly, they low-key think fascism is based, which is kind of freaky. And they take the cute out of cute conservative, TBH. Disgusting! Next, big government. It's exactly that. I know you know this one. Why? Because big gov sucks. The bigger a government is, the more it gets involved in all aspects of your life. Healthcare decisions, parenting decisions, schooling decisions, even where you live and what you eat. The more the government is involved, the less freedom you have to make your own decisions. Big gov equals huge problems. I always call it massive. Sometimes they say huge. Not a bad one. Huge. Bipartisan. When something is bipartisan, that means it appeals and is supported by people on both sides of the political aisle. I feel like this word is as rare as a clear answer during a Biden administration press briefing because it's truly so rare that our radically different politicians agree. <laughs> Conservative. In the United States, this means you support a traditional family unit, law and order, the Second Amendment, and you fiercely defend tradition and Western civilization's way of life. It also means favoring smaller government, lower taxes, limited regulation, and free markets. We stand this vocab word. Like, who wouldn't want to be conservative if you're down for all this, right? These ain't opinions. These are facts. Filibuster. You ever heard of that one? Filibustering is a way for a senator to delay or entirely prevent debate or votes on a specific proposal. I sort of wish there were filibusters in real life. They'd come in handy real quick for delaying stuff I don't want to do, like Mondays or cleaning my room. In 2013, Ted Cruz engaged in an epic filibuster to prevent the Senate from making a decision on Obamacare. So what did he do to kill time? He read Dr. Seuss. Would you like them here or there? I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them. Sam, I am. Now that I think about it, Filibuster does sound like the name of a Dr. Seuss character that befriends worms and poops flowers. Yeah, what's up, you Lorax? And anytime someone in politics uses the term grassroots, they mean average Joes rallying around a certain cause or issue from the bottom up. Sort of sounds like a bar where a bunch of dude dads meet up, or is that just me? Drinking ah. beer pubs, <clears throat> shall we? Now let's talk about what a leftist is. Stay with me. I know the word makes you want to puke. The first thing you need to know is being a leftist is completely different from a liberal, which I'll explain next. Security experts believe that a large percentage of far left radicals subscribe to at least one of three main classifications. Anarchism, communism slash socialism and Marxism, and autonomous radicals. Leftists want to radically transform America, which can only mean one thing. They hate it. They want the government to be as big as possible, providing everything for people, and therefore making all decisions for everyone. They believe that letting the government be in charge of all basic needs means they will all be met and result in the elimination of poverty, hunger, etc. This couldn't be further from the truth. This is straight up delusion, aka basically socialism. Potato, potato. Very hot potato. Then there are the liberals. These guys actually have more in common with conservatives than the left. Hear me out. They believe that a person's skin color is insignificant, they're pro-capitalist, 
federalism and they're in favor of free speech and protecting America's borders. But they differ from conservatives by favoring gun control, abortion, and thinking that people should look to the government for structure. I work for the government. Now libertarians believe that liberty is the most important value in everything, be it social, personal, or economic situations. They also want as little government regulation as possible. They think this can be achieved through complete political freedom, individual autonomy, and voluntary association. You know what? I don't really even understand any of that. And to be honest, this was the hardest political term to define, which is probably why libertarians never win elections, because nobody understands it. <laughs> All right, neoconservatives are neocons. They don't understand pacifists and are huge advocates for an interventional foreign policy. They strongly believe America has to stop the global spread of communism at whatever cost. They constantly want to show the world that America is the greatest superpower, AKA with war. Yeah, America is the bomb and the best place to live, but not only is foreign intervention hella expensive, our government's primary focus should be the American people first. He loves declaring war. Paleoconservative or paleocons is a type Type of conservative who's always on a cleanse, works out at Soul Cycle every day, and thinks fruits and vegetables are God. Just kidding, that's a fit conservative. Paleo conservatives are uber traditionalists and also what most consider the alt right. Most are against any form of immigration, want pure laissez faire capitalism, stress white Anglo Saxon Protestant ethics, and unlike neo conservatives, they want no intervention with foreign affairs. They also want a very traditional approach to gender and culture and lots of American nationalism to promote the economy. Tradition. 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 Populists are politicians that appeal to the ordinary man. When the middle class thinks that their beliefs are underrepresented, it's up to the populist to stand up and speak out. Think of it like a fancy word for Trump conservatism because Trump tried so hard to be in touch with people and not act like an elite. Conservative populism, I would say, is how I would describe my political beliefs. It's not about race or religions, but average Joes versus the swamp. Hey, give me five, give me five. Pro-life means believing all human life, no matter what stage of development they're in, deserves the chance to be born. Pro-choice means someone who believes a woman has the right to terminate her pregnancy through abortion. That's technically illegal. This next term sounds like the name of a bird that eats little wormy worms for breakfast. The red herring fallacy. It happens in like every presidential debate. A politician is asked a question and instead of truthfully answering it, they bring up another social issue that has recently been the new gossip. It's so infuriating. The information is irrelevant and all they are trying to do is distract us so they don't have to answer the actual question. Our politicians are masters at this. I don't know. Please don't ask me that. My stomach hurts. A social moderate is someone that somehow avoids supporting major views of a specific party. In fact, they're so moderate that they openly reject having an extreme one-sided belief. Not sure how you can not take a side amidst the current cultural divide, but what else? Uh, no, I was recently diagnosed with uh, stage four. I don't give a shit. Straight ticket is when someone votes for every candidate in an election that aligns with one certain political party, no matter what. Simple to the point. I'm voting for Pedro Sanchez, who do you think? Now, just in case you're new or don't know these yet, I wanna leave you with the most important definition. The politics one. A cinnamon roll is a precious person that we love and protect at all costs. Back off. Green Bean is her highness, Meghan Markle, because when I was listening to Royals by Lord, I did not understand the lyrics, so I sang something, something, and green bean. And obviously, Meghan Markle never wants to be royal. Alas, a nickname was born. What? Five Orange Juicy is when every segment in my daily episode of Politics is top tier prime content that you cannot turn away from. That's some good, good juice. Conservative tea is piping hot and juicy gossip. <sighs> a worm is a literal worm. Would you still love me if I was a worm? <laughs> Meat sweats is something I say when a show I love is really beefy and exciting. When I promise meat sweats, I follow through. Developers, 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 developers. Developers, 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 developers. And to all of you watching the show, the ladies are cute conservatives, the guys are dude conservatives, and any little babies you have are cinnamonies. We're an unusual family. And that's the conservatee on ABC. You're welcome. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Like this episode, let me know if there was a word that I didn't define that you're kind of still confused about, whether it's in politics or politics. Put this episode on your story so we can edumacate the peoples and hit the save button. We're back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. 
Support Poplitics, the first ever conservative pop culture daily show by subscribing to our channel, turning on notifications, and of course, hitting the thumbs up. Also, our main home is on Instagram, seriously, just trust me, that's when the real magic happens. Follow us there, at Poplitics.